Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for the Arm of the Sun Savage, also known as Alexander Seven Savage. After downing a success, you might have the weight of the world on your shoulders, but I believe in my true heart, this encounter is shockingly easier and you'll have it down ASAP. My name is Ms. Tech and I'll be your raid guide. Throughout the encounter, if a player dies for any reason, the boss will be buffed with high wire, increasing his outgoing damage. Even one stack makes the damage from sizzle sparks and beams in the later phases almost impossible to deal with, so you'll want to minimize any mistakes early in your progression. On Savage Mode, each phase will cycle through all four jails, two at a time in fixed pairs per phase. No jail will ever repeat within a phase, and while the order of jail pairs is random per encounter, each distinct pair will always be the same for each phase. Additionally, the boss will not automatically target the appropriate player for each jail. Instead, a prey target and a tether will link to specific jails in each pair, serving as the mechanic with which players enter these jails. To facilitate coordination of who exactly goes where during each jail pair, each pair is preceded by a tell. Recognizing this tell will allow players to expect and plan for their respective jails. Let's take a closer look at each jail. The red jail will have an ad with a physical damage reduction debuff. As such, we often refer to this as the caster jail, since only magic casters will be effective here. As with normal mode, the affected player in this jail will be debuffed and unable to move until the padlock on the outside is destroyed. The add inside will continuously do damage to this player and eventually explode, killing the player inside if not destroyed in time. That said, it's imperative that this padlock is destroyed as soon as possible, allowing the player inside to destroy their add in time. The purple jail has an add with a magic damage reduction debuff. Again, we refer to this this as the melee jail, and we will only make melee enter this jail. As with normal mode, this ad will put up a 20 second throttle on the affected player that will kill them if the ad is not first destroyed. The white and green jails are for tanks and healers respectively, and they have essentially the same mechanics as normal. Tanks will have to destroy their adds while avoiding the walls and mitigating damage as necessary, and healers will have to stand on the spout spewing gas and shield through the damage to save the raid from that spicy dot. Now that we have a decent grasp of how the jails work on Savage, let's start at the beginning. We pull and tank the boss in the north of the center platform. Corporal Punishment, these large yellow AoE circles will target two players and cast twice in a row. If a player is hit by this, they'll take damage, suffer a dot debuff, and be drained of TP and MP. Bait and avoid this as necessary. Sizzle Spark is a massive raid-wide AoE that will also place a lightning resist down debuff on all players. In later phases, Sizzle Spark will cast multiple times in a row, stacking this debuff up and increasing the amount of damage players will take from any lightning attacks. Sizzle Beam is a line AoE at the player affected by this purple marker. It will do high initial damage and lightning damage over time. Only one player should be getting hit by Sizzle Beam at any one time. Have them or the raid move appropriately. Healers need to be extra careful anytime the sizzle spark debuff is up. The higher the debuff, the more damage this player will take from both the initial hit and the resultant dot. Next up, all players will be tethered to a bomb. You can't escape the damage of your own bomb, but you will need to move away from other bombs. Getting hit by your bomb will put up a magic vulnerable debuff on you for about 7 seconds. Getting hit by more than one bomb will probably kill you. Getting hit by your bomb while on the spikes will also kill you. To deal with this mechanic, each player has has an assigned spot to pull their bombs to. We have four players run to the outer platforms, and four players spread out in the north, east, south, and west points on the center platform. Shortly after, you'll see your first jail tell. If a bomb is dropped on a melee, you'll know to expect the red caster and purple melee jails. The melee unaffected by the bomb tell will be taking the tether into the purple jail. The assigned caster will be taking the prey into the red jail. If a bomb is dropped on a healer, you'll know to expect the white tank and green healer jails. The healer unaffected by the bomb tell will be taking the tether into the green jail, while the off tank will be taking the prey into the white jail. All other players will stay in the center and deal with the adds that spawn based on the jail pair. Whatever the scenario, all players should know what their roles are relative to what jail pair is currently active. Let's back up a bit. The bomb tell will drop down and that affected player will move away from the group to ensure only they are affected by the bomb's explosion and debuff. All other players get ready to perform their assigned roles based on the upcoming jail pair. Once the bomb Tell explodes, Quick Things will lift off, and two random players will be affected by Tether and Prey. Anytime Quick Things lifts off, players caught under him will be debuffed with separation, lowering their health and decreasing the amount of healing they receive. As soon as you see him casting Zoom Doom, make sure you move out of melee range. The two players affected by Prey or the Tether must pass the 
keys to the appropriate players to ensure smooth management of each jail. To pass tether, the player must simply intersect the tether. They will eventually be pulled into that jail by an ad that will self-destruct upon entering the jail. Players on the outside near this jail need to be careful to avoid the self-destruct blast, especially if they're debuffed from a previous bomb tell or are on the spikes. To pass prey, players must be on top of each other. Note that any time prey is passed, the previously affected player will get the slippery prey debuff, making it impossible for them to reobtain prey. As such, players must ensure that they are only passing the prey to the necessary player. We facilitate this by designating the center of the platform as the prey area. The player with prey and the player who needs prey will meet there to swap. The desired prey player will then wait in the middle for the boss to pick them up. Since jail mechanics will replicate based on the number of players in that jail, no other player should be near the middle of the platform at this time. While the assigned players are in their respective jails, the rest of the group will be dealing with their respective ads. The small panzer dolls must be destroyed in about 30 seconds or they will explode, debuff, and probably wipe the raid. The big storm dolls Kugelblitz should be interrupted to avoid its paralyze. If the red jail is active, the padlock will obviously take priority over the ads, and these ads should ideally be destroyed before the boss returns. Once he does, he will cast Sizzle Spark. Players returning from their jails should ensure that they're not caught on the spikes at this time. Next up, Uplander Doom signals the beginning of the tank swap. After the cast, Quick Thinks will begin stacking a physical Volnup debuff on the main tank. This can stack up from 4 to 6 and tanks will need to swap once all the stacks have been applied. A few moments later, the second bomb tell will drop. Knowing who does what based on each tell is essentially pure memorization, and with practice and repetition, it'll become second nature. Send the appropriate players into their jail while everyone else deals with the ads. You might get another sizzle spark and at 75%, the boss will enter phase 2. Tanks will immediately have to watch for Uplender Doom here and swap appropriately. The spikes around the room will disappear and the cat and two weight of the world balls will spawn randomly in the room. This phase is essentially the same as normal. Players need to keep the boss away from the cat when she casts True Heart, stunning and slowing the heart and burning it down before it reaches the boss. Should the heart reach the boss, it will add four stacks of high wire, which is essentially a wipe. Players will need to avoid weights as they move around the room. These can be incredibly annoying, so keep your eyes open. During this phase, healers will have to deal with Flamethrower. The boss will mark up a random healer and target them with a massive line AoE. Anyone hit by this will receive a Searing Wind debuff, which will periodically pulse high damage and knock back anyone nearby. In our group, we have the healer stand in the center of the room since we're usually moving the boss around the outer edges to avoid the cat. This will give them enough space to avoid blasting others with their Searing Wind. The affected healer will heal themselves through this damage and move back in when their timer expires. You'll see two hearts in this phase, and shortly after the second one, the off tank will be targeted for Sizzle Beam. We have this tank aim the beam behind the boss or into the nearest wall, while everyone else continues to burn down the heart. Once the second heart is down and the boss reaches 65%, the room returns to normal and you're forced back onto the center platform for phase 3. This phase begins with the next bomb tell. If the bomb tell drops on a healer, you'll know to expect the red caster and green healer jails. The unaffected healer will take the prey into the green jail, while the assigned caster takes the tether into the red jail. The raid will also have to deal with one storm doll and padlock when it spawns. If the bomb tell is dropped on a ranged DPS, you'll know to expect the purple melee and white tank jails. The assigned melee will ride prey into the purple jail, while the off tank takes the tether into the white jail. The rest of the raid will have to deal with two panzer dolls. Once these jail mechanics complete, you'll have a sizzle beam followed by two consecutive sizzle sparks. In this phase, each sizzle spark will be cast twice in a row, making any subsequent sizzle beam target a high priority for healing. Next up, the next jail tail will drop. Send the appropriate people in while destroying the ads on the outside. Immediately after this set of jails, tanks will need to swap after Uplander Doom. More sizzle sparks and a beam, then bombs will drop on the entire group again. Handle these as you did in the first phase. A few more sparks to heal through before things get a bit interesting. The boss will do another Uplander Doom, and after that swap, he will target a healer for flamethrower. At the same time, the center platform will become electrocuted and players will be forced to the safety of the outer platforms. Since the healer with Searing Wind cannot be on the same platform as the raid, they'll be on their own platform, with the rest of the group across the room. Next, the boss will cast Corporal Punishment four times in a row. Since we obviously do not have very much room to deal with so many of these huge AoEs, players need to position themselves carefully on the corner of the platform to bait that first AoE. Then, once the first AoE casts, they will run around the four corners, careful not to go too 
too quickly and box themselves in. A single sizzle spark to heal through before another set of four AoEs will go out, with another sizzle spark in between. These will be handled the same way. After the first AoE in the set, Searing Wind will have expired on the healer, and they can make their way back to the group. The danger here lies in them getting caught on the spikes during sizzle spark, which will result in instant death, or that the healer is also one of the targets for corporal punishment. If this is the case, they need to line up their AoE puddle with the group's puddle so as not to cut anyone off. Alternatively, you can have that affected healer stay away from the group until after the set of double sizzle sparks. At this point, the boss will spam two sizzle sparks and shortly after, a player will be targeted for sizzle beam. Have them stand in a predetermined spot while everyone else moves away. They'll take high damage here from the double sizzle spark stack, so healers be ready. Another two sizzle sparks and the spikes will disappear, leading us into the next phase. This time, everyone will have to watch for three weight of the world balls, and the healers will need to expect two flamethrower casts. Everyone else will continue to burn down the boss and the heart, keeping the boss away from the cat as necessary. As this phase change happens, the first healer will be targeted for flamethrower. They will run away to the same area they were in during that AoE merry-go-round. Next, the cat will spawn its first heart and all damage dealers should swap to it. At the same time, Quick Things will also cast Uplander Doom, forcing another tank swap. Remember to keep the boss sufficiently away from the heart during the tank swap. Next, Sizzle Beam will target a random DPS this time, and we have them stand on the wall, aiming the beam away from the group. The next flamethrower will cast, and this time the affected healer runs to the middle, handling it in the same way as the first cat phase, while we continue to move the boss around the outer edge of the room as necessary. Handle the second heart, and then get ready for a spam of three sizzle sparks. The room will return back to normal, and the last phase will begin. The tells in this last phase are a bit different. If a sizzle beam is cast on the off tank, you'll know to expect the red caster and white tank jails. That same off tank will be grabbing the prey into the white jail, while the assigned caster grabs the tether into the red jail. The raid will deal with two panzer dolls as well. Ideally, in this scenario, you want to burn down one of the panzer dolls before the padlock spawns, then burn down the padlock before the next sizzle spark cast. Remember not to get caught on the spikes during this cast, or you will die. Once the padlock is destroyed, kill that last panzer doll before returning to the boss. If two bombs drop on a healer and a melee, you'll know to expect the green healer and purple melee jails. To avoid overlapping damage from these bomb tells, we have the raid move to one side of the platform, while the affected melee runs to the other side, away from everyone. The affected healer will take their bomb to the closest corner platform. In this instance, the melee unaffected by the bomb will take the prey into the purple jail, while the unaffected healer takes the tether into the green jail. The raid will have to handle one panzer doll and one sturm doll. You should be able to burn down the panzer doll before the sturm doll spawns. Just remember to interrupt Kugel Blitz as necessary. After this first set of jails, you'll get a sizzle beam and then sizzle spark three times in a row. With three stacks of the debuff, the healing requirement is insane, and the use of personal cooldowns will help avoid that horrible snowfall effect of death. The next set of jail tails will then appear. Handle these as necessary. Tanks will need to be ready for another Uplander Doom tank swap, and healers for the next sizzle spark triple. If the boss isn't down yet or enraging, you'll see another set of group bombs. Handle these as you did in the previous phases. The boss will cast one final enraged sizzle spark at 12 minutes and 30 seconds, and you may find that the DPS check can be a tight one. If you're having trouble meeting this requirement, maximizing your damage output, including tank and healer DPS, will help immensely. And there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Up next, we'll look at the monstrosity that is Alexander 8 Savage. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.